Sadiki, thank you so much for making the time uh, to actually invite us to this amazing, um, one-of-a-kind event. Thank you. Fantastic. My first question would be, how long, how long was the time that it took for you guys to put together this whole initiative? So we started 18 months ago to be where we are now. Uh, we really spend a lot of time trying to understand what is out there in the in the in our country the numbers from a woman empowerment point of view from you know women who are owning businesses we wanted to understand in, in reality what does it does you know youth unemployment look like therefore where where do we go uh, must be based on that type of data to allow us to be able to do the right thing um, so that it, it's not like kind of testing it out that it's informed uh, uh, you know from from the data that we have second is that we a business banking bank mm. and so what was important for us was how do we start you know playing a part in South Africa Inc in creating opportunities for the young to own their own businesses mm -hmm. uh, and that's where the idea really came from was to to start with that to start understanding how we can we can work with that and how do we mitigate the risk that actually allows for this this youth not to fail because a lot of businesses particularly in COVID, did go down you know mm -hmm. did close down mm -hmm. and and that is why we thought we need to actually approach this in a manner that says there's a business model so they don't start from scratch and, and choose a sector that we can start with. Because what we want to do is be able to go to other sectors as well. But we actually wanted to choose a sector that we thought is growing at this point in time in South Africa. And the sector that we looked at was that beauty and therapy seem to be growing. They don't seem to be saturated as yet. Um, and so that would be a better place to go. And that's why we, we approach uh, Sove uh, to be our partner. Absolutely. Um, beauty is definitely one of the businesses that even during COVID and after have remained pretty resilient. Absolutely. Why do you think that is? I, I think, you know, the, we live in a world that is so, so crazy hectic that people want time out. And so beauty and therapy is a place, it may look like I'm just walking in to do my nails, but I'm actually walking out the house to have a peace of mind, Absolutely. to sit there and, and walk out feeling confident about myself because the world has been so crazy around us. To go in and have a masseuse, it's a relaxation that actually helps you, you know, from the stress levels that we are living in. And, and I think that is why it's growing. And people have gone past the, I'll do it myself. Mm -hmm. If I can ask someone to do it for me, because I can, mm -hmm. why not? You mm -hmm. know, as opposed to doing it myself. Particularly because most of us are running in jobs. You know, COVID created longer hours of work. People don't realize that. Mm -hmm. Longer hours of work. Therefore, that opportunity of finding a place where I can have solitude. I can, uh, they call it man camp. Mm -hmm. I can have a man camp mm -hmm. um, that allows me to just have some sort of peace of mind and de-stress. That's why these businesses are, are growing. You know, informally and formally they're growing. Absolutely. words you mentioned was young people when is it when do you think because the bottom line is this is about money it's about when can people have access to money we do know that the big one of the biggest challenges is the challenge of access to finance when is it the perfect time to introduce children or young people to the talk of money to the talk of entrepreneurship yeah. yo I mean I think that as parents we should actually introduce the talk of money at the early age of five, mm. you know, when I can count. Mm. Uh, we, we unfortunately introduce it late. If I think about myself growing up in Meadowlands, my dad was a teacher, but the time he spoke to me about money was when I was going to tertiary because as he was sending me off, he was like, you better manage what I'm giving you, girl. You know, we actually don't make the time. I do think that a lot of the schools are starting much earlier now, mm. but I, I, I don't think it's enough. Mm -hmm. I really, particularly 
if I may dare say for us black, the black child yes. we don't start it early mm. we don't have those conversations early and i think it's also because the in in the house the literacy around um, managing money. money is what's also lacking so we need to have a lot of programs mm. i wish that radio tv could do a lot of programs mm. around just the basics management of your salary your wages uh, despite the fact that the wages could be an informal one where you come from you know, washing someone's washing, how do you manage that so that you're able to survive? Because I, I think that a lot of my recollection of how my grandmother survived as a domestic worker with a whole lot of grandchildren is because she was fortunate that she was taught on to, her, to manage money by her employer. We don't do those things anymore. Yeah. We employ people and we don't talk to them about managing money. Yeah. Because there is this notion that says that, you, well, it's my money, why would you, why would you want to talk to me about it? Yeah. Whilst our interest should be, if you're working for me, I want to see you grow. Absolutely, and I think the whole topic of managing finances speaks to holistic wellness. Absolutely. Especially nowadays. Now, <clears throat> it's, it's all about having the perfect business model, the right business plan in order for us to access finance looking at, because banks would look at investment, like Bedvest. What is it that you'd say about Sorbet, that when you looked at what they proposed, if they're the ones who proposed it, or that you could say to people, this is what makes a winning business plan. These are just some of the things that made us say, we're going with Sorbet. So, so we came up with the idea. Wow. Uh, and we approached Sorbet based on their uh, the business model. Their business mm -hmm. model is almost, I, I, I want to use the word, instructive on what you need to watch out for every day. So every day you count your products. Every day you know the number of clients who are coming. It's pay appointment. And if you don't have appointments, how do you, you know, look for clients you who've not come in? It's a it's a guideline that comes with it. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's a guideline means all I needed to understand is I have the passion about running a business. I walk in, I open the book, and I know Monday to Friday to Saturday what I need to do, how I need to manage my stuff. And, and so that basic is, is already in there, and that's what we liked. We like the fact that the frame is not just on the operations piece, but it's on the people management, it's on the marketing, it's on the product management, and it's on the product pricing. So you don't start from scratch. You, you have a base. You may want to change some stuff because you want to put your flair, but actually the, base, the basics of all business principles are all there. Managing finance as an education, and looking at our education system, what would happen if we incorporated managing of finances into the education system early enough? I think it would be the best thing that could happen to this country. I'm one of those people who say I, I, I really believe that as opposed to us talking to mm -hmm. learning arithmetics or maths only, is actually be taught onto managing your own finances from that time. Almost schools saying, we pay 50 rand school fees for the month, but 10 bucks is for you and we wanna watch you on how you manage it. And you teach in, in a practical way that the young kids actually know that they need to come back and explain, why did I, where did I use this 10 rands that was given to me? And if I, if I didn't use it well, it comes with the fact that you are marked on it, you know, practically. Uh, and I think that will also maybe Going back home, if I come from an environment where education doesn't live, I'm able to teach my parents, right? Absolutely. To say, hey, Ma, the way, why are you buying those things? Those things are not good for us to be buying. We should be buying this and this and that mm. in this manner and use it in this manner to be able to be successful or to even survive, you know? My final question, women in business, it's a, it's a, I was listening to the statistics that speak to 29% of them have access. Hence, I love the initiative you are doing. What would be your message in terms of why we should encourage women going into business? You know, 21.1% mm. in this country, it's a small number. Mm. We should be sitting at, at above 50%, if you ask me. My message is actually not just on how do we, you know, encouraging women to own businesses, but to encourage both public and private sector to work on using women businesses so that these women can actually employ more women or encourage other women to actually partner because then you grow the size of the pool if we don't use women businesses we are then not creating the encouragement that is required I can only be encouraged as a as an entrepreneur if a Hannah at Bitvest Bank 
actually uses me, my, my services, right? And if I grow because she's also growing her business, I'm then able to bring more people. And, and also, I think the other thing is for all of us, we have a role to play. We talk about entrepreneur development in this country. A lot of emerging countries grew because of SMEs. How do we actually create that butterfly effect that women can bring onto the table mm. by spending our CSI money, not just on giving people food and then, I'm not saying we mustn't, but how do we teach them to fish? Because you can create so many businesses by just teaching people on how to fish. And I'm using the analogy you know, that's in the Bible is, don't feed us, teach me to, to fish so I can feed myself. Because then I'll start feeding other people and then I start creating more people that learn how to fish. I think if we can have that mindset in, a, in all the businesses, we can't go wrong. And how do you feel about the future of South Africa in a short way? I am a hopeless, optimistic South African. I've seen us go through the most difficult times. I grew up as a Tlepar mm. so, mm -hmm. you know, so, so I, don't throw. I, yeah, I know that we've, we can overcome. Mm. What we need is to be as united as we were then. What we need is not to ban stuff, but really approach the responsible people in a responsible way to insist that they do the right thing. What we need is for every one of us to also do the right thing. Absolutely. Every one of us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Hannah. That is uh, the CEO of Bitvest Bank. It's been an honor. And I'm going to start off with you. How did your planning go for this competition? What, what did you incorporate in the planning? Uh, it was a, a process. I was taking it through as it goes because we first did it to send on the application mm -hmm. before the closing date, which was on the first. Mm -hmm. and then they had to announce the top 14. Mm -hmm. And then we had to wait on what we needed to as a top 14, what is required from us, mm -hmm. they said that we needed to present to do a pitch business presentation. Mm -hmm. And then they sent us a list of what we need to work on. So we are working on what uh, sections or questions mm -hmm. we are given to work on. Mm -hmm. And then we had to come to Joburg to, to present. I think each of uh, one of us had a Wow, and then how is this going to change your life specifically? It's going to change my life specifically. You are now a businesswoman. I it's am. amazing saying that. Um, someone is getting hired probably tomorrow. Yes. So you've made space for someone to get a job there. Mm -hmm. They're starting their first day. Yes. What's your advice to that person? Um, to stay focused and to stay true to themselves and to know exactly why they're there. Because you there to push yourself. No one is there to literally push you. So if you want to do, I mean, Sobe has a structure where it's commission based. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get to where you want, you need to have literally goals, set goals for yourself and say, this is where I want to see myself. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, you need to make sure that you reach your target. That's why I say, Nobody has to push you, you need to push yourself because at the end of the day, you're the one that determines your salary. So if you're there to play, you're not going to make money. But if you focus, you're determined and you know exactly what you want, you will definitely succeed in the business. 17 years, that's a long time. It is a long time. Do they keep you guys young there somehow? And, and I'm going to come I'm gonna come to you. I'm going to come to you. Is this also Palesa? Oh. That's Palesa. Okay, Palesa, I actually love you. Your, I just saw the reel on the, on the, on the video yes. when we were inside and I just loved your story. I think you were the first person who was announced. Yeah. What have you learned about business? Not, not, not customer service, yes. but just business. You know, you have to be a visionary first to be in business. Mm -hmm. It's not for everyone. It's for somebody who wants to do something extra. Mm -hmm. somebody who wants to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And for me, business is about making a difference making a difference in the lives of the people that you are serving mm -hmm. in your store, making a difference in the guests that comes to your store, and making a difference also outside. I'm coming from Dobsonville. Mm 
Mm. You know, I've got schools that I'm, I'm interested in going to mentor and making sure that in terms of taking career, because, you know, with us, we started the other route and then ended up in the purpose that God has given for us. Mm. So for me, business is to be able to influence. Mm. You know, it's easy to influence when you've got a voice, if I can put mm. it like That's that. So true. You have a voice. You can influence because they are looking at your life and they are seeing fruits. So for me, it's more about going out there now and Wonderful. pursuing this in a different way. I love that. <laughs> Some kid, um, what for you, what is the best thing about working at Forbay? At Sobe, the people. Mm. Sobe has a culture. It's, it's the group itself is about the people. You become one of the people. You are groomed. If even if when you start you don't see it, you are groomed to learn that your franchise partner is about you as a as an employee. As an employee, you are about the person walking through the door. That's the culture. I love that about the group. Zumkita, who helped you with your business plan? I mean, I'm trying to find out what is it that you think you did to get this franchise. You guys are business people, yeah. now, you know. <laughs> I have business acumen. Mm -hmm. I have it. I have always set my goals in entrepreneurship. Oh. I just didn't see it mm. coming into fruition like this. Mm. I'm grateful for this. I did it by myself. Can you believe that um, you 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 won a franchise? I can't. <laughs> I can't believe. I can't believe it. Mm. But I'm ready. Let's Is get it? into it.